Hi everyone! In this video I'm going to show you a few techniques you can use to create a sketch using Autodesk Sketchbook Pro. I'll show you a few tips and some of the tools I like to use. I use a Wacom Intuos Pro Medium pen and tablet and I'm using Sketchbook Pro version 8 for Windows desktop. Now I've opened my project in Sketchbook and it's a good idea to check the resolution of your project to make sure it's set at a high resolution. Sketchbook will save these settings when you close the program, but it's a good idea to check before you begin, especially if you're using the program for the first time. So you can go to Edit Preferences and under Canvas just make sure that the resolution is set to 300 pixels per inch. You can then add your reference image or you can sketch freehand on the blank canvas. I have a drawing I'm going to use just as a reference to demonstrate, but usually it would be a photograph or a very rough sketch as my reference. As I said, you could also just use a blank canvas and sketch something freehand. So to add your image that you have on your desktop, you want to go to File and Add Image, and then you can stretch it out over your canvas to whatever size you'd like it to be. It's a good idea to change the opacity on your reference image that you're going to be sketching on top of, just so it's not too distracting, and so you can see the new sketch lines that you're drawing on top of it. Now the brush library in Sketchbook, there are lots of different brushes to test out. So open up the brush library and just experiment with all the different brushes there are. I quite like the Pencil Pal brush for sketching and that's what I'm using in this project. I've added it to my favorites on the sidebar here. And to do that, you just grab and drag the brush that you want to add to your favorites. It keeps them handy if you're using them all the time. So I'm using Pencil Pal to sketch and you want to add a layer on top of your reference image and this will be the layer you sketch on and it's at full opacity so if you start sketching and it's looking really transparent you're on the wrong layer <laughs> you want to stay on the layer above your reference photograph or sketch because you'll be getting rid of the reference at the end of this project so you basically zoom in and start sketching you want to zoom in and move around your picture my Wacom pen and tablet is pressure sensitive, so it's not like drawing with a mouse. It, it responds to the pressure that you're using on the pen, which makes for a really nice sketch. Another nice tool in Sketchbook Pro is the soft eraser. I use that eraser all the time when I'm sketching. Um, it's really nice for just getting rid of little bits here and there you don't want a really hard eraser for. You just want to sort of soften the edges of something. And you can change how much the eraser erases. If you just double click on the icon of the eraser, you can change that to however you like it. And from time to time when you're doing your sketch, you'll want to hide your reference layer just so you can see exactly what your sketch is looking like. So just press the little eye icon to hide the layer and then when you're ready to go again, press the eye to make the layer visible and continue sketching. Make sure you stay on your top layer. When I'm sketching, I like to use lots of short light strokes to make a line rather than one long, really steady line. I find it works better for me like that because that's how I sketch on paper. Now I've just used black, the color black for my sketch, but you might also want to try like a dark brown or a gray would be nice as well. It's just to simulate the color of a pencil. So this is basically the completed sketch. And this is quite an intricate design, but you might do something really simple if you're starting just with a blank canvas. It's fun just to play around and try all the different pencils. Anyway, so this is my sketch. And once you're really happy with your sketch and you're finished with your reference image or your sketch or your photo underneath, you can then just get rid of that layer like so. I'm just going to keep mine for the moment, but I'll show you around my sketch and actually I'll just mention canvas size when you first start your project you might want to have a look at the canvas size and change it if you haven't used the program before you're not used to what size canvas you should use I maybe recommend a nice a nice big size maybe 3000 by 3000 that'll give you a square and if you want to change your canvas size while you're in your project you can use the crop tool here pull in at the sides and you'll see up here that it's changing the pixel size of the canvas. That's a good thing to do when you first start is check your canvas size. 
I'll also mention uh, brush sizes. Here um, I've got the brush puck, which you can find if it's not displaying in your program. You can find it up here in window. There's all different tools here that you can display. These are the ones that I like to have on all the time. So you can change your brush size here by dragging across on the brush puck. I've changed the size of the pencil slightly throughout my sketch. Not a whole lot, but just a little bit here and there. If you want to then add colour to your sketch, um, if I was doing an ink drawing, I'll show you this reference drawing was ink line art. And what I would do for this usually to add colour would be just like a flat flood fill. And with the line art, I would use the magic select tool and I would go around and select the parts of the horse that I want to just fill in with flat colour. And I'd usually add another layer and I'll just show you really quickly. Just go around and select the parts of the horse that you want to fill in. So I do it like that to add flat colour. But with a sketch like we've got here, um, we can't use the magic wand tool because there are lots of broken lines and it just won't, it won't be able to find the parts that you're trying to fill in. So what I would do with a sketch, if I want to add colour, I would add another layer underneath the sketch and find a paintbrush that you like and just paint underneath the layer like so. And that takes a bit more time, but that's, that's fun as well. So that's what you can do if you like to add colour. Another fun thing to try, if your sketch is quite light in colour, mine turned out uh, reasonably dark, but if you're not happy with how light it is, you want to make it, give it a bit more impact, make it a bit more bold, you can always duplicate your sketch layer, like so. You can see, I'll just hide it and then show you again. And it makes it, makes it all darker. And you can even do it again if you want even more boldness to your lines. So that looks quite nice as well. And if you're really happy with that and you want to keep it like that, um, you can merge these layers together so that they're all the one sketch layer then. But I think I'm going to leave mine as a nice light sketch. You can delete your reference image, your sketch or your photograph once you're all happy with how it's looking. And there you have it. That is the video for today. I uh, hope you enjoyed it, hope it was helpful, useful, I hope you got a few tips from watching this video. If you enjoyed my tutorial and you would like to subscribe to my channel, please do so. Thank you for watching and until next time. Slide.